All right, back for another happy hour. Hope some folks will come in. Yes, uh, here we are. This we is uh, week five, and uh, let me let me click in there and make yep. sure I know what's going on. So Absolutely. Turn the volume down. Uh, but hey, first things first, man. Uh, I got. I had about four weeks worth of, of uh, content for this show. This is week four five. weeks. Yeah. Well. So I'm out. Hey, you've been out playing just, golf today. I'm just hang out. Uh, Casey Curtis, what's happening? I hope you're doing well out in South Carolina. Alvin Jefferson, good to see you, War Eagle. Hey, how we doing? Yeah, big. So we got the uh, yeah, we got the line, well, of, line of Kugel. Uh, we went back to the pomegranate. That was uh, Nathan Davis. Cheers. That was Collier's favorite. So hey, we're going right back to the. Is this what did you say? Pomegranate, pomegranate shandy? shandy. Hey, yeah. good stuff. It's a Wisconsin beer for our folks up north. Oh man, that's good stuff. It's good stuff. Excellent. Excellent. Well, uh, I you know we're gonna get started and uh, tell us. Yesterday, y'all had the you had a silly thing you sent me. You said you called it "Hug Your Lender Day." What? Yeah, we do it every year at uh, Valentine's. We uh, put together a video. Hug Your Lender Day. Hug Your Lender Day. Was yeah. this like so you can get women yeah. just to come so, up to you? So and give look you a hug? down in the um, in in our uh, our previous posts on on our mortgage bank page, you'll find a, a copy of the video. It's funny, man. It's, it's shameless, fun. man. You're just trying to get hugs from the ladies. <laughs> it's fun. It hey, is fun. I need to try that. Hey, it's National Hug Collier Day. We even had one of our lenders was uh, was homeless in the corner down here, and uh, he, homeless. He, yeah, he said spare a hug. Had a sign. Hey, can you spare a whatever hug? it takes to get the ladies to give you a little squeeze? You That's know true. what I mean? That's true. Everybody uh, needs some love. Absolutely. Especially on Valentine's Day. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, shoot, with all this negative this stuff going on in the world. Yeah, we got a lot of negativity. I mean, the uh, you know just now real estate's today, positive. Yeah, but. I mean, just yesterday we had this shooting in Florida uh, at, at the school, and there's just so much. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, reaction to it. Obviously, I have to say, I have to admit though that it, you know we we have a little bit been, become desensitized because it did, it didn't stand out as much as it has in the past because it's happened too often. It's definitely happening too much. I even had um, a young kid. It's in the family that was talking with his parents, talking about how he sometimes thinks about that happening at his school. So it, Man. it's a huge problem. Um, the fact that we don't react more right now, uh, since it's happened so many times, is, is sad. Uh, there's a lot of arguments on both sides about gun Man, control. some of these people on Facebook need to chill. Yeah, uh, you know lot, what I mean? Uh, if you're not heated, directly affected. A lot of heated argument about gun control and, and assault rifles and should they be banned and and what really happened? I, I personally don't have a lot of opinion on guns. I just that's just me personally. I don't get into that fight. Um, I do believe this was a mental health issue, and yeah, I don't have any answers for how. Well, to hey, we all a little crazy, but that guy was flat out loony. <laughs> I think, I, I, yeah, I, I really. He's think, I mean, I think it is not normal. You get to a level of crazy, and you're not going to stop him from doing. Bad things. Well, hopefully, hopefully they'll get to the bottom of this. And uh, I think the good news is, if there was a silver lining in any of this stuff, is that, that we're seeing Democrats, Republicans, all these people from all different walks of life come together. It's funny; it takes that for it to happen. But you know what else is crazy? Valentine's Day, man. I'm I'm being real. It's a Hallmark holiday, and it's fake. We all know that, right? It sells cards. It sells and flowers, cards and flowers. And chocolates. I mean. You know what? It's funny. I looked up. I even uh, got free shipping. Did you really? Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Well, I mean, consider. Uh, the books.com is my favorite only because, you know, uh, I the think. Books. Hey, you know what? My new, my new screen name, I'm going to make it John Wilkes Books. Get it? <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, John Books. Yeah, John Books. 55% uh, of the population celebrate Valentine's Day. It's a woman's holiday. Let's just be real. It is. But the problem is when the woman tells you, hey, don't worry about it. Don't get me anything. You don't need to do anything. I don't get upset when I don't get anything. I don't either. I mean, I mean it's, it's crazy. I mean, look at this, man. Average person. I want to know who these people are. Hey, look, your own daughter just said, uh, I love the books. She loves the books. Hey, she got some uh, chocolate-covered strawberries, by the way. Hey. She loved those, too, I think. Hey, that's good. Yeah. Good job, Taylor. Yeah. Uh, get to class. Um, no, she's out right Oh, now. she is? Yeah, I think Okay, well, average person spends $143 on Valentine's Day. Who are these people? I, it isn't me. My wife got twenty eight dollars from uh, Whole Foods. What did you buy her? A chicken? I, no, I, eh, close. I, I got her some. Uh, I, I don't got know. Some flowers. At Whole I don't Foods. know what you call them. They're these 
crazy like like colorful flowers so i let my daughter pick them out and then uh chocolate covered strawberries you know for the romantic side yeah. uh very romantic i am but here's the thing here's interesting stats 4.7 billion spent on jewelry but out of 4.7 billion which is larger than any amount spent on anything it only made up 19 percent of all the gifts spent on valentine's day but yeah i mean that tells you it's some, amazing huh somebody's paying for it if you know what i mean it's a lot you know of I mean? money spent on Valentine's Day. They paying for it. One point eight billion with a B on candy and two point two billion on flowers. That is nuts. And by the way, men, this is gonna shock you. Men spent twice as much as women. Why? Because women don't spend. And you know the other thing that's really got me riled up? You know this Me Too movement yes. about everything? Yes. I think the women hey, what what happens if we went because you know a lot of people want to be, you know, equal. So when we get time to pay the bill at dinner, I'm just going to let Amanda pay for it, her half. You're going to say hashtag me too? Yeah. Hashtag me too. You pay half. Hashtag her too. Yeah, but that ain't going to work. Hey, Taylor says, uh, if you don't want to do anything big, single flower, my dudes. A single flower will always work, my dudes. <laughs> Women are nuts. She says, Taylor, she's female, uh, and well, that's they good. think it's cute. Well, I'm just... I'm. What about the 7-Eleven flowers? Just, I used to quote, give girls... You remember the 7-Eleven flower? I don't... They, they would literally be like right by the register. I'd get a Slurpee. A Slurpee. And, and then you'd get a, like a long stem rose and a little a little thing that, uh, like, uh, you know, things you put, get blood in, and they, they put your blood in at the doctor. Yeah. It's like had water in it instead, so it you didn't get spill. get a Slurpee and some black and mild. Please. Hey, black and mild. A little black and mild and, and a and a 7 Eleven rose. That's right. There's old Larry Toth, go blue. Uh, Olympics, what do we man. Got? Did you see hey, the, let me tell you something the flying about tomato? The Olympics. No, no, I didn't see the flying tomato. But every time, tell me about it. Well, I mean, you know, he's gone and fourth oh, Olympics, okay. three goals. Yeah, okay, okay. I, I Dude's wanted, I didn't know what you're the man. About. The snowboarding. The dude's gone just with nuts. Flying tomato. Yeah, that uh, last night or two nights ago was awesome. That that was impressive. The two 1400s back to back. Oh, and yeah. And uh, a couple other things he did. But let me tell you about the curling, okay? I've seen enough curling for the rest of eternity. Oh, my. Every time I turn on curling. the Olympics, curling is on. And I'm sorry, but I just don't know that that's an Olympic sport. I mean, let me. I feel like you need like some lawn chairs down the side with beers and some bonfires. Well, to me, it reminds me something. It's have, like have you noticed some of them are married, and it's, it's like an old married couple going, "Hey, Wanda, yeah, get the broom out, yeah. hurry, shuffle it, shuffle. <laughs> you got it, shuffleboard. That's so funny. Know. Okay, that is crazy. That's awesome. Uh, you know, but I am excited. I'm excited <laughs> about the. Uh, Excited about the uh, curling and all of the Olympics. It's great. Hey, by the way, have they taken up your anybody that doesn't know David? He knows he missed the he missed the brooms. Larry missed the brooms. Uh, Kathy, is she good with the brooms? Uh, I don't know. Y'all could be a good couple because y'all from up north, so I guess curling's big in Michigan. But uh, yeah. but hey, speaking of that, CNBC's always on in your office. Are they showing like curling instead of the no. stock market? No, no, we can't cut to curling instead of instead of stocks. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking so, of that, well, let's throw it right into uh, we got in, we right, talked so, last week yeah. about what. So we're talking about interest rates. rates. Yeah, interest rates are going up. They've right. been moving up um, pretty much all year since the beginning of the year. Interest rates are rising. Uh, the economy's moving. Everybody knows this. So what we're looking at is uh, the estimates are that rates are going to be to four and a half by the end of the second quarter. Well, You're, we're really already there. So we haven't had much of a pullback on those. They've been pretty much straight up. So we're waiting on that pullback, but they're estimating rates to get to about 5% by the end of this year. So what I wanted to do was just give you some numbers on what that means. All right. Um, so let's say on a $200,000 loan amount. Okay. Um, so for example, $250,000 purchase price, right. 20% down, right? So at 4% interest rate, your principal and interest, I don't have taxes and insurance in there, so right. uh, keep that in mind, is $950 a month. Easy. At 4%. At 5%, it's 1074 So what have I, so I've basically lost, So you're looking what? at about $125 a month increase. 125 okay. increase over yeah. where I was at 4%, and now I'm at four, 5 4 to 5%, just on that interest rate. And that's just the principal and interest portion of that payment. Oh, what does that mean to my buying power, Okay, though? so on the buying power, roughly, that drops you about thirty thousand dollars. So let's say two hundred fifty with twenty percent down, right? Versus two hundred and twenty with twenty percent down, right? Is going to have the same monthly payment nine hundred fifty bucks. Wow, a month. that, that's crazy. 
So you're losing thirty thousand dollars. Thirty thousand. Now I did a couple other numbers on a hundred and fifty thousand dollar loan amount. That four percent rates at seven twenty five. At five percent, you're at eight fifteen. So about ninety dollars a month. Man. Okay. So let's bump it up to the three hundred and something thousand dollar okay. price range. All right. So this one percent difference is going to translate to about forty thousand. So three seventy five with twenty percent down. Right. Versus. 335 with okay. 20% down. So that's at 1% origination. Uh, no, 1% in the interest rate. Okay. So, 1% bump, we yeah. should say, right? So you're, so you're losing anywhere from thirty dollars to $40,000 on purchase price in that two to $400,000 price rate. Okay. Just for, the, just for the change in interest rate. Wow. I mean, you, what's, what's crazy is that's huge. But now, here's the problem, though, I've had this week is I've heard from some other local lenders here that are trying to scare people into the market. Oh, they're going to be at six. It, it doesn't make sense. Yes, yes. You know, I, and I had somebody else comment on Facebook about this. Somebody else told me the rates are going to 6% in two weeks. Guys, that's not, that's not sustainable. That just not, doesn't make sense. No, you know, we've been saying for things, 10 years. Things can't move that quickly. You know, one of the first things you told me when I met you? Hey, rates are going up. Rates have been that going up That was over for five 10 years. years. Well, that was 10 yeah. years ago. Yeah, we've been talking about this for a long time. So we've been expecting it, and it's finally happening now. Right. But it's not going to move that fast, okay? Things can't, we can't sustain a uh, 2% jump in interest rates. It just doesn't make sense. Well, the market wouldn't contain yeah. itself. It would, yeah. it would, but, but you've got to understand economics. You've got to understand the market and what's going on. The economy's growing. Money has been cheap. The consumer mm -hmm. has money to spend. So we have finally seen that flow in. So our, our so the economy's moving without getting too deep into this stuff. Well, the economy is moving now. It, it's doing what we wanted it to do coming out of the 2008 um, yeah. depression. If you right? will, yeah. Uh, By American standards, yeah, depression. Right, right. The bread so, lines were huge. Yeah, yeah. So, so coming out of that, we this is what we wanted, and now we're finally starting to see it. So things have to start changing, and I think some of these big moves right now in the stock market and in rates are certain people with a lot of money trying to get on the right side of the new situation. You know, it's funny you say that because you know I don't know if anybody noticed this, but if you read about what happened, what was that? I guess a week ago. It was really was it last week that we had the big drop. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so it'll be a week less past Monday. Mm -hmm. It was really four funds that were basically computer driven that caused the entire market to tank. Now, they hold a ton of money. And then what you had is a lot of these robo advisors yeah. that were rebalancing portfolios. Yeah, there's a lot of automatic trading going on when, when things hit certain levels. There's a bunch of selling that goes into the market immediately, and then that can really skew. Look, man, it's all crazy. It, 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 the idea that it, my favorite is when, like, hey, one, you know, Mark Carlisle's wife got to ring the bell at the New York Stock Exchange. So did uh, uh, Russell um, Park. Uh, yeah, Russell Park. Russell Parker did a few weeks ago. And the, the great thing is it's the coolest thing ever, right? At the same time, that bell isn't doing nothing. The computer's really handling everything. Yeah. So the idea that a single investor has any take in the market is, is, is nutty. Yeah, there are some players with a lot of money that, are mo that can move markets. But... Uh, but I think you know some of this, some of these automated trading things uh, are, are are what's exaggerating the moves. But let's talk world. about why, because a lot of these folks are going to start using it as as a way of competition to get you to go ahead and and come to them because the rates are going to be at six percent. One of the things that I think we have to look at is the idea, just like in the stock market. Again, there there's a lot of similarities, but we're in a different environment than we were in '08, right? So take the stock market for instance. There's there's real earnings. Uh, there's real earnings. There's real companies there's real that we're earnings. making. Yeah, there's a couple of things. That, uh, borrowing money is still cheap, okay, which means that it's going to be easier for the consumer to get money. Um, hey, Milton. Carlisle's, Carlisle's comment, Arnett is a player. There you go. He, he, pure player. So, listen. The, so is Milton. There's still money coming in. There's still money's cheap, so the yep, consumer has cheap. money. Um, there are some tax cuts that are coming in, which are hopefully, I, I've seen some people post on Facebook that this is translating to uh, 35 to 60 bucks a week in their paycheck. Which is so, gonna help them get a loan. Right, so there's, there's money coming in, which is Absolutely. the biggest thing that we need to, to keep the economy going. So right now there's no panic. There's no need to panic right now. You still need to look at your options. Money is still relatively cheap. Look at what you're paying on car loans and credit cards. 
I mean, those yeah. interest rates are ridiculous. Absolutely nuts. So, so this is just a this is just a part of a, a move. I think it's just a new scenario that we're moving into. Absolutely, and one of the best things I I, I think I figured out a long time ago was that hey Milton's back hey, from Milton. uh, hey he's in Atlanta now. Hey, Man's been all over Europe. And uh, Leatherwood, Leatherwood left us. I'm still upset about that. What's Leatherwood? Oh, she was one of my favorites. She left us though. Uh oh. Yeah. Um. But anyway, you know, it, it's just a different environment than, than we have been in, but yet it's still a great environment for the market because things are at historical lows, really. I think you said it a few weeks ago. Think about interest rates at uh, uh, roughly about 8% on average historically, and we're still almost half of that. Yes. So yeah. uh, Mark said a car loan. What What is that, a car loan? What is this guy? Yeah. He's had one more than Carlisle. we have. Carlisle. Doesn't That's right. do car loans. <laughs> That's what that is. That's funny. Well, uh, wanted, as we move on to the next um, uh, segment, well, let's talk about yeah. Money Magazine came out with you know the hottest trends for kitchens. Now, hey, you're looking at two uh, very uh, heterosexual men that do not know a ton about uh, fashion and design, but we do know good looking when we see it. Yes. Right. You see our wives, except for, right? Except for, this is the TFR, the Two Faces for Radio. Two channel. Faces, that's right. Two Faces for Radio right here. Absolutely. So Money Magazine came out with uh, the five... Hottest kitchen design. Absolutely, huh? and the trends that they're seeing, and want to kind of go over those with you. Uh, first of all, they said, say goodbye to granite. Granite is gone, gone, what gone. What are we going to have instead? We're going to have, you know, of course, everybody's going to guess what? Uh, quartz. Uh Quartz and marble. Now, marbles, you know, there's there's a reason for both, right? One of the both are more expensive than granite in general. Uh, quartz and marble. See, I had no idea. Yeah, I never would have guessed that. One of the big things about one of the great things about quartz is, you know, you don't have to keep it sealed. You don't have to do uh, um, a lot of upkeep to it, right? And just in case anybody's wondering what quartz is, quartz is about ninety five percent raw natural material and about 5% polymer or essentially glue or it, it bonds it together. So there's so it's a little bit of a uh, it's all natural kind of. Right? All natural kind of. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, and then you you know, of course marbles is, is the, the beauty comes from it's all natural. And one of the problems when it's all natural is the variety, right? You can get a ton of different colors and everything in quartz. Marbles a marble color, but the veining that comes with it. Hey Cody, uh the the veining that comes with it, you know, that's the design and the yeah, thing. Yeah. Hey, if it's all natural, what is it? It's going to be different with every slab that they pull out of the ground. And one of the problems there, we talk about sealing of quartz. One of the big things with when you get to marble is that you got to be real careful, especially with kids, because it's very porous and anything can seep down th down into it, especially if it's very acidic. I'll like, give you like Kool Aid, peanut Kool butter, hey, jelly. One of the funniest things and one of the I mean, I, I felt terrible for the homeowner, but it was I was with uh, Jay Williams, you know Jay over at Build Tech, and house had just been finished, beautiful marble. Here comes the owner, but here came another contractor, I mean another laborer or whoever that was working with Jay, and he comes down, takes an old ink pen, one of the ones that had real ink in it, and they hadn't sealed the marble yet. Throws it down, poof, mar uh, ink explodes all over this marble. Makes a mess. The look on the builder's face was, oh my gosh, <laughs> because what ended up happening was it started staining the marble. There's Tammy. Uh, hey, Tammy. Tammy Hallman. I he loves drinking in. it. There she is. Yes. Uh, so, uh, lots did, of colors we've there. Got some, uh, we got some tickets to the Birmingham Home Show. If you want to see this quartz or these new ideas that, that we're obviously not up to date on, then uh, we've got some tickets to the Birmingham Home Show. Just... Uh, let us know in the comments there. Yeah, we got we got at least ten. I know. The other thing is uh, the the cold white cabinet look gone, gone, gone. Boof, bye. It's it, it is gone. Me, they're going to medium hues. That means you know uh, on the color range. Medium hues. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just okay. in case you were curious. Good. Or light wood cabinets. Now I don't think they're going to go with that Manila envelope color. That's just gorgeous. But yes. I think they're going to go with a light oak, something like that. It's coming back now. Re, they're also saying flat fronts on the on, on the cabinets, and then they're also saying that uh, resurfacing is a good possibility. If you have a wood box 
that's built out already in your kitchen, uh, go ahead and just reface them. You know, you could, yeah. the box is fine usually, especially if they were built in place, built for your your home. Uh, in terms of hardware, they're saying that the trend this year is going to be matte metallic hardware, uh, which is going which is typical because I, I think what we're seeing is everybody likes modern kind of. You don't want to go all modern, yeah, because that's weird, especially here in Alabama. I mean, we think, hey, look at I know the, nothing about this. Look at that yuppie from Buckhead. <laughs> like, I mean, if you're from Atlanta, it'd be like Buckhead, yeah. right? Now, where yeah. that y'all drive Jaguars and are, <laughs> Dragwars, I think you said, yeah, Dragwars, <laughs> Jaguars. Uh, and then uh, they said, you know, one of the things they said was, look, not everybody's going to give up their white cabinets. And if you get, don't give up your white cabinets, you darn well better paint the walls. And you better make it a fun color. Uh, you know, whether it be the grays are still hot right now. Okay. The kitchen, you know, you can take a little uh, chance in the kitchen. I think that the kitchen's a good place to, to express yourself. You know, one of the best advice I ever got from a, a uh, designer was, hey, test it first in the powder room because no one gives a rip what color it is where you're going number two. Okay. Or number one, I guess. Yeah. But uh, yeah. anyway, and then, and then, this is the most important one. Get rid of that bar cart, you know, the little cart that people have in their kitchen that has the cocktails and everything. Get away with it, especially if you're going to sell, and add a coffee cart. Okay. Right? That yeah. big deal. I mean, hey, why we don't have, uh, uh, you know, Starbucks on every corner because people aren't into it. I mean, yeah. people are used to wasting $8 a drink. I mean, so yeah. they want to bring that home. And I think really, uh, and it costs so little. If you're staging your home to sell, I have one right now. And it, it really was neat. She had a little sign that says coffee bar. She had her little coffee bar set up and with biscotti and all that crazy stuff, which I don't really know what that is. I'm too afraid to try it. But uh, uh, Milton probably knows because, uh, you know, he's in the restaurant business. But uh, anyway, so trade that bar cart for a coffee cart. Just thought these five things were interesting. Yeah, and if you, you know, you know and, and some of these things that you could actually roll into a renovation loan. You yes. know, and that's our that's our next topic we're talking about. Uh, some renovation loans. Absolutely. And uh, Milton does know what biscotti is. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so we're excited about that. But yeah, so so I've been doing some research on these renovation loans. I've heard about them forever, and uh, when you say the renovation, popularity yeah. I think is is not been. Overwhelming, but I think we're moving into a market where uh, you know making some sales is going to take a little bit of creativity. There might be a buyer that wants the house, but there's too much work that needs to be done on the house, so they're afraid to get into it. How and much work are we talking cash. about? Well, we could do as much as you want, really. Um, this is not two or three K you're talking about. Yes, it yeah, is two or three K. Okay, yeah, there, there are a couple of options. The two or three K is the FHA loan. Uh, the home okay. style is the Fannie Mae loan. Home style. Home style is what they call it. It's a Fannie Mae renovation mm -hmm. loan. Um, but just a, a couple of things. There, there are. There's a two or three K limited, which is uh, a little bit easier. Less, limited. Less than thirty five thousand dollars in repairs, mm -hmm. and no structural repairs require. Cannot add a pool on this loan, but there's other renovation loans where mm -hmm. we can repair uh, the pools. Let me ask you this question. Two questions. One, yeah. do I have to hire a contractor to do the work? Yes. All right. And Now, then, you can buy the materials, Okay. but we have to have a You can't just do the work by yourself. I can, I can buy the materials. I just need to hire somebody yeah, to sign off for Somebody's got to do the labor. Okay. So somebody has to do the labor. Does it have to be somebody that's uh, yes, we have to licensed? Have licensed. And the best way to do this is with a general contractor. I think out of everything that I've looked at and seen. Uh, or home builder. The, the number right. one thing is going to be to have, well, to have a general contractor that can manage the job, to manage everybody. Because let's say you have an electrician, a painter, okay. a plumber. Um, somebody's got to act as the, the general contractor. So. These guys are not going to want to, the painter's not going to want the electrician signing off on his work. No, that's right. Yeah. Uh, that's exactly right. So to make it easy on the homeowner, the home buyer, and you're going to need to get a general contractor. One more question I had on that, though, was... Best practice. What, one of the questions I got from a person the other day was, uh, and being a tax lawyer, I didn't even know the answer because it's such a new law, is regarding the deductibility of the interest on these on the portion that was used for the renovation is that still deductible under the Trump tax plan? I am not a CPA and I don't even play one on TV. But you play golf today though. I don't know. 
You did. I would talk to your CPA. I would think that any loan for remodeling the house is going to be... I mean, that's my the, reading the of it. The interest is going to count because this loan, really, we're going to close on this loan. Uh, so it's not going to be a home equity line. It's my, not a home equity loan. Uh, this is going to be a, a regular first. Mortgage. My understanding under the new tax code is that you're going you're to be able to deduct interest up to seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars of any mortgage that you have. What that's unless, not unless yes. it's a home equity line that was used as to buy cash out yeah, to pay off credit go. card loans or something else. Um, but just a couple of things: the two hundred three k standard loan, with, which which is more than thirty five thousand, can actually you can go existing foundation ground up. Wow, I mean, really? I mean, you can leave the existing foundation and go ground up and just change the whole thing. You can do a lot of stuff um, with this. I, I, I talked about the general contractor. One thing interesting to note, you can actually defer six months of the payment if right. the house is not habitable. So say that again. So if the house is not habitable, let's say for some reason we have to cut off the power All right. to do something for two months, whatever. We have to cut off utilities. Well, it's a pretty bad gotta, contractor. Yeah, we got to redo something. That it's going to keep you right. from the house being habitable for two months. Then you can defer the payments for those two months. A okay. lot of people choose not to do that, but it's an option. Um, now, the, the Fannie Mae is 96.5% financing. I mean, the FHA. Sorry about that. All right, 96.5%. On the FHA. Okay, so it's 3.5% down. Yes, Fannie okay. Mae goes up to 95% on that one unit. Wow. One unit. Like if wow. it's multiple units, then yeah. that changes. 90% on a second home. Okay, so 90% on a second home. So I could go to the lake, get yep. a lake house, mm -hmm. get 90% and on a Do renovation. renovation add gotcha. a story to it, add you a, a boat dock. Okay. Um, yeah, boat dock. Yeah. To have a cold beer. Yeah, that's what you got to do. So uh, a lot of things we can do here. The contingency funds. Now, on these loans, a, different, a couple things that are different is uh, the interest rates are going to be a little bit higher, which is understandable. Interest uh, rates is, are going to be a little bit higher. It's kind of a specialty loan. Okay. Uh, we're doing you know renovation work. We've got a lot of moving parts. We've got contractors, builders, uh, the buyer. Um, we've got appraisers that go out to verify work. We've got yeah. people managing the draws. What when, about when fees? When work gets done. Yeah, there's fees with the, the permits, uh, managing the draw, things like that. There, there's definitely... The fees, but those fees are typical with construction. Yeah. So I what? Mean, what is I mean, the we're rebuilding a house? But here. there's a benefit. You're get, so to be clear, we would have these same if we were building new construction and we were building custom, mm -hmm. not through say a signature homes or D.R. Horton or somebody like that, that where they're supplying everything. We were building our own home. Yeah, you got permit fees anyway. Right. So that's yeah. gonna be you'll be paying them regardless. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like we're we're tacking on, you know, fifty bucks a day just to <laughs> just to be your lender. I mean. These, really? these, are, these are standard things. Um, I'm sure there so, are so the some that do. Now, obviously, we do have a contingency. So the contingency funds are usually 10% of the job costs. Okay. So, uh, what does that mean? Dollars. What does a contingency mean? So a contingency means unforeseen items, anything that is not known. And one big question is, uh, let's say there, there's minimum things that the, the appraiser catches. Okay? okay. Those are things that are known, obviously, because the <laughs> appraiser caught them. Um, that we may not have known about them from day one, but that goes back into the original budget. Contingency is for unforeseen items. Uh, 10%, we use All a 10% right. contingency if the house is occupied and the utilities are on, 15% if it's vacant, utilities are off. At the end, that money can be applied towards the principal balance okay. to pay down the loan. Pay down the loan, gotcha. Or we can go back in and add appliances or so like really, that. this is going to be a holdback to make sure everything gets done. In other words, the bank yeah. never takes risk, right? I mean, you're it's you're it, that's any bank. I mean, it's it's what it's by the very nature of what a bank is. You're making sure all well, the, the work gets done. The bank is still risking ninety six and a half percent of the. But didn't you say it was a holdback of ten percent of that money though? Well, it's a holdback. The holdback is the. Um, the holdback is ten percent of the job cost, but the bank is still. Assuming risk on the well, larger, I see what you're saying on the on the acquisition percentage of the mortgage. Yeah, I got debt. you. I got you on that. Um, all repairs have to be done hey, Marcus, in six months. Um, Marcus Caps just joined. There he is. Hey, Marcus, how you doing, buddy? I'm going to be joining you on the cruise next month. Just kidding. He wishes he was. Um, but really, that's that's about it. There's a lot. There's a lot of information here. A lot of stuff to cover, and there's a lot of steps up front in in finding the house. 
getting the contractors put together, getting the bids put together, figuring out the work, figuring out everything that you want to do. If you're adding a story or if you're adding onto the house, you need uh, plans and specs. We need everything up front. So yes, when does it more make work? When does it make? But it's a good program. When does it make sense for me to do that versus paying cash? Like, let's say it's a is ten thousand dollars where I need to do it, or is it? 20 30 where does it make sense that's just that that depends on on the overall so let's say if the house costs 200,000 and and you want to do $20,000 worth of work so the total deal is 220 you, you know maybe we do something else maybe we figure out something else or maybe you pay cash for the renovations right and finance the 200 but if we've got a $100,000 house and you want to do 50 you know 40 50,000 dollars worth right. of repairs then might be a good idea. Where is the, uh, but okay, th- that brings up a good point though, is that while it may be a good idea in my head, because I got a lot of great ideas in my head that Amanda does not think are very good. You know what I mean? Some other people might not. Yeah, think probably, good probably so. But what if it doesn't, ap- does it need to appraise at the end value? Versus, oh, yeah. So yeah, we've got to do a subject to appraisal. So how's that work? And the appraiser is going to take into consideration the, uh, the renovations that are made, okay, that are going to be made, going to be and made. How that affects that house in that neighborhood in the market. So, in other words, I always use the difference, and there's nothing wrong with these two areas, but there's a difference between Adamsville and Mountain Brook, right? I mean, just demographically, yes, uh, and not from a race standpoint, but from a wealth standpoint. And a two thousand square foot house is going to cost different in each, right? So, so the bank is not going to like you building a mansion in Adamsville, but. It's going to be the norm in Mountain Brook, yeah, correct? Yeah, so I mean, they're going to look at that, and, and we've seen plenty of teardowns in Mountain Brook. Uh, I've got a good friend of mine that that did that, ripped the whole house down, and we're talking, you know, north of a million dollars, um, <laughs> and just rebuilt the whole thing. A million so, dollars, yeah, rip so, it down. Yeah, so uh, no, well, Nathan the, Davis did that, but house, I don't know anybody the else. Existing house wasn't that much, but after he got done with it, it was it was worth a good bit. But so yeah, you've you've got teardowns, and you've got. The value is going to be based on the area, the neighborhood, uh, and what these uh, renovations do to the, the uh, marketability. One more thing I thought about, and I go, I keep saying one more thing, but it's always one more thing, is how hard That's are these? One of my borrowers said. Yeah, well, they are. Oh. Uh, how long do these take to close compared yeah, these to? These are going to be about 45, 60 days. It's From the time longer. we start, yeah, it's going to take longer. So if I, so let's say, and I'm, that's really dependent on the the buyer. The borrower and getting all the information together. All right, I go into contract today, which is a normally a thirty day closing window. Is it possible to get one lined up in thirty days? I don't think so. And because and the reason is the reason is because we have to get the contractors out. We've got to identify all the work. So, um, a lot of times we've got to get a HUD, a HUD consultant on many of these on on these two or three days. We've got to get a HUD consultant that goes out. Well, the HUD consultant actually is very familiar with the work, and oh, he knows okay. exactly what these things cost Sorry. and how long they take. So we've got to get them involved to, to put, put a report together. It's really lining up all of the, the pieces and making sure that we've got all the information. It's really the bids and the contractors um, and getting all that the stuff. The bids and the contractors. I see what you're saying, because too. the appraiser has to have that. To put together the report, and he's, he's basically know. do two appraisals, yeah. right? Because he's yeah. got to do one now, and then he's got to do one anticipating, and then he's got to go back and do actually a third at the end, right? And say, yeah, those were all done. Not really. We'll no? just do an appraisal subject to. We're going to do an appraisal subject to. That's why we need everything. We need all that information put together. The work that's going to be done put together before we order the appraisal, so he knows what's going to happen. Gotcha, gotcha. And and the same thing there is too. Uh, what about the bank inspections? Are y'all doing typical draws where you're, the contractor will get what three draws? Yeah, we set up we set up one to five draws, and that depends on the amount of work that's been done. And and we have the appraiser go back out and make sure the work is done. What and we I, have a whole draw team that manages. One, one is there is there a particular repairs or updates that are better for renovation loans than others? You know, I don't I don't think so. I think uh, I think you're going to have certain ones that add more value okay but it's not going to make the loan easier it doesn't matter what i do i could right. do a porta potty attached to my or i love it man if i if i was building a house i put a urinal we can't we I mean, can't attach porta potties to any homes no yeah porta potty would not be ever be attached yeah, yeah yeah that's true that's true but i would put that's a, a great idea i would put a urinal in my basement <laughs> Is it, why would we need a toilet yeah there's only two girls and one in boy the in my cave, house right? yeah 
in the man cave. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, every week we kind of talk about something from the consumer perspective. There's Mario. Hey, Mario. Thanks for joining. Mario. Uh, wanted to talk to everybody about fakespot.com. And fakespot.com, in case you don't know what fakespot.com is, it's a website that takes all the reviews from Yelp, TripAdvisor, uh, let's say Yelp, TripAdvisor, Amazon, uh, Apple, all these, and he said you'd never go number two. <laughs> uh, it takes all those and finds out are these reviews spam where they where say the person selling just loaded all their friends and they all loaded them up they have algorithms that tell you whether or not the Amazon review or the Yelp review or whatever are they accurate based on a lot of scientific stuff and algorithms within the computers it's a fascinating uh, website but they do have a uh, one of the best things they have if you go into Amazon's uh, app on your phone right uh, they have a thing on there called share where you can share out that product but if you have the fake spot app on your phone, it's Darren James, Darren James, hey, every week, every week, he's Mister Consistent. In. There you go. That's right. What well, fakespot.com? You hit share, like you're going to share it to a friend, but you share it to Fake Spot, and it'll immediately tell you whether or not all those five star reviews were they accurate, right? Because I mean, especially on like technology stuff, they will have so a not, lot of stuff. So I'm not supposed to have the everybody in the office leave me a five star? No, oh. no. Making it happen. Look at him. He's making it happen, and he's making it rain. Well, man, hey, I, I, I wanted to give you a quick update on the Internet, right, at the home. Okay, so yep. we finally made some progress. We've got the charter in there uh, this past weekend. Mr. Customer now, Service Charter. So if you need, if you need any uh, tips on how to cut the cord and improve your Internet because your TV, because yeah. you go to yeah. Internet TV, okay, yeah. so this is the problem I had. <laughs> Went to Internet TV. And uh, didn't have enough speed. So I had to drop AT&T because right. it was like 17 megabytes per second. Switched over to Charter, but okay. also added Google Carry. Wi-Fi. Yeah, okay. So you got Google Wi-Fi, Google Fi. Google Wi-Fi. Um, oh, so you that's mean, my router. No, that, that wouldn't be Wi- Oh, Google Wi-Fi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Google Wi-Fi. So yeah, that's yeah. the router, and I got a couple of mesh points. That's pretty fancy. That spreads out the, the signal. And the... Um, uh, and the speed now is up to 117. What? 117? 117. You might as well just like go boop. per second. I felt like uh, Emmett's Dr. Hey, you felt, Emmett Brown. Uh, is that like you on the Peloton? 1.2 gigabyte. Mm. Gigawatts. Gigawatts. Is that like you on the Peloton? Oh, yeah. Mm. That's what I do. 117 megabytes per second now. Well, yeah. So we're no, a lot that, better. I mean, now, a lot better. Now, is Brady still doing the games and you're yeah. able to do yeah, other if things? He's, if he's done yelling at me, then, then we're So, hold on. All this started with him? No, it really started with me complaining about sports. But then once once Courtney watched the Auburn game and we had problems with ah, Auburn. You're funny, Darren. Then it all started changing, just for the record. Yeah, I mean, because she's going to watch Auburn this. Auburn football changed it. Well, that's right. Auburn football changes a lot of things. Yeah. And we extend coaches for no reason. But Well, I think, you know, uh, you know we're 38 minutes in and uh, yep. had a lot of information. So I appreciate you guys checking in. And uh, we will be back next week. Yep. If you're down in Louisiana, go to Darren James, powered by EXP down there. That's hey, how hey. fast Call Your Sales House is at 117 megabytes per second. That's right. Hey, DJ, you the man. We'll have to bring you on one week, Darren. Because, I mean, this guy is a renaissance man. He's a ladies' man, and he's a, the, a, the daggum good realtor. And uh, Daggum good. Yeah, I have to that's, watch that. That's myself. better than great. Right. Oh, agent225.com. Anyway, uh, see you guys. Hey, two see y'all later. for radio. Till next week. Bye. See you later. Let's do it.